There are so many voice exercises to warm up your voice, but which ones are the best? Which exercises will give your voice a boost so that you can keep using it for as long as you need it? By the end of this video, you will know three vocal exercises to wake up the muscles inside your larynx, improve resonance and vocal power. And the third exercise is controversial, so stay tuned until the end. Hi, I am Katerina, speech-language pathologist, and here on this channel I share practical tips about using your voice in a healthy way. So, if this is a topic that interests you, consider subscribing to this channel and hitting the bell notification icon so that you don't miss any of my future videos. Your voice is you, not just two bands in your throat. Your mind and body also influence how your voice works and how long it will last. In preparation for a speaking gig, presentation or teaching day, you can be doing all kinds of body, mind and voice exercises like movement, mindfulness, breathing exercises, stretching, massages, grounding. But in this video, I am going to focus on the vocal part of your warm-up. And again, there are many different types of voice and speech exercises you could be doing. So I recommend choosing a few exercises that have different goals. You don't want to do three exercises that have the same goal, that target the same vocal function. So for example, you want to Wake up your laryngeal muscles that move the structures inside your voice. Optimize your resonance or shape of the vocal tract and strengthen the vocal fold closure. So how well the vocal folds come together and how they vibrate. And that is exactly what the following three exercises are going to do. So let's do this. Exercise number one, sirens on and G. This is my go-to warm-up exercise. This is an exercise that will move your larynx. It's easy and very effective. We are going to use the NG sound, which is a neutralizing sound. This sound tends to position the larynx in the mid position at any pitch level. The NG sound also uses a high tongue, which means that the tongue is out of the way and the larynx has a space to move and the tongue cannot push the larynx down. We are going to use sirens to move the voice through a range of pitches from low to high and then back down to low pitches again, like the siren of an ambulance. When you take your voice for a spin through a siren, your larynx moves up and down. And if you have tension, you release it by allowing the larynx to move. So let's do it. Put your hand on your neck to feel the laryngeal movement and first say the word sing and prolong the last sound. Sing. Don't use the word song or sang. Use the word sing because it will bring your tongue into a high position. So again, sing. Excellent. Just sustain the NG sound in your comfortable range. The sound is fairly soft and quiet, so no need for big sound. Also make the sound sweet and whiny. Once you have that sound, start your siphon. Move up in the range a little bit, then come down, then go up again and repeat a few times. Sing. If you come across some voice break, stay in that zone and smooth out the voice breaks. You don't need to break any records in terms of how high or low in your range you practice. Stay in, stay in your comfortable zone. As you go higher, move your head a little bit back to engage the head and neck muscles to support the voice. So like this, sing. And repeat a few times. How are you enjoying this exercise? Let me know in the comments. And while you are down there, 
Also, check out my other resources for your voice in the description below this video. Exercise number two, humming on a single pitch. When I work with my clients, they often tell me that they don't have time to do long vocal exercises. And this is what I usually tell them. If there is one exercise that you do, even if it is for a few minutes throughout the day, choose a resonance exercise. Shaping of the vocal tract can make your voice more efficient, which takes away pressure from your throat. Some people may say that the sound lifts and frees their vocal folds. Improved resonance can boost the sound so you will perceive it as louder. And if you want, you can shape it into a sound that you really want. So you can make your voice deeper, brighter, buzzier, or quieter, whatever you want. And here is the added bonus of resonance exercises, the healing effect. We now know that the vibrations of your voice actually affect the tissue of the vocal folds at the cellular level, which can promote healing. So if your voice feels tired or strained, resonance exercises can actually help decrease inflammation or swelling that is happening at the level of the vocal folds. Okay, let's do the exercise together. Let's do some simple humming. There are two questions you need to be constantly asking yourself. Does the sound feel easy in my throat? And do I feel vibration somewhere in my face? If you answer yes to both questions, then you are good. So let's just hum and see what happens. Hum in your comfortable range. Mm -hmm. Ask yourself, where do I feel the vibrations, the buzz? Do I feel it in my lips, in my nose, in my cheeks or somewhere else? Does it feel easy in my throat? Mm. Now go to a lower pitch and notice if you feel more vibrations in the face. Mm. Then go to a higher pitch and notice the amount of vibrations there. Mm. Every time you change the pitch, also notice how it feels in the throat and find the pitch where you feel most vibrations in your face and sustain that sound. This note will be very stable with very little wavering. If you are not feeling vibrations in your face, then try to change your hum in a way that gives you most vibrations. Mm -hmm. If you are experiencing vocal strain, tension, or even pain when speaking, and you are ready to work towards a free, strong, and confident voice, you can apply to our Vocal Freedom System coaching program. Check out the links in the description below this video. Exercise number three, vocal fry. So this is the controversial exercise. You probably heard that vocal fry is not good for your voice, and I would not use it all day long for communication with other people. But this is a wonderful exercise to improve vocal fold closure in the gentlest way possible. Vocal fry uses low air flow and low air pressure and therefore vocal fry can be a very relaxing sound if done in the right way. Vocal fry requires very little effort anywhere in the body. Therefore, it is so good for people who use too much effort or experience strain and tension. Vocal fry teaches them to lower effort, breath pressure, airflow and muscle work. So let me show you how to make a nice relaxed vocal fry sound without constriction. First, blow out most of the air from your lungs so that we have the least amount of breath pressure under the vocal folds. Start at the bottom of your vocal range, so go to a low note. 
And now make a gentle bubbly sound. You should not feel any tension, so not like this, but like this. This feels really good. What do you think? So three vocal exercises with three different goals, but we are not done yet. Before I share a bonus tip with you, let me invite you to my vocal gym. This is an online membership program that delivers one exercise for your voice every single day. Keep your voice in top shape with short two minute exercises. Click the link here or in the description below to learn more about this program. Bonus tip. To keep your voice going all day long, make sure that you are well hydrated. I know you've heard this million times, but there is a quick way to hydrate your voice. Inhaling warm steam or cool mist from a nebulizer. And I just bought this nebulizer for myself. I personally prefer warm steam from a personal steamer, but in the summer I thought, I would try this portable little thing called a nebulizer. It uses sterile saline water. You cannot use normal water and it makes it into a very fine mist that when inhaled hydrates your voice. So try it. If you found this video helpful, click the like button and share it with your friends and check out my other videos right here below. See you soon. Bye.